Perfect. Um, so, hello everyone. My name is uh, Philipp. I'm a doctoral student at the Technical University of Munich and like to present our um, research paper on semantic similarity-based clustering of findings from security testing tools. Um, this was uh, an interdisciplinary joint work with my co-authors, Markus Hogenreiter, Abdullah Gulreis, and Florian Mattes. And here we try to bring together natural language processing and um, software engineering in the context of security. So I'd uh, like to start therefore a bit with the motivation of our motivating research problem, which comes um, um, out of the field from DevOps. DevOps may be a term that you have heard before. So it brings um, together development and IT operations um, and therefore aims at shortening the development life cycles of software. Um, and there are some practices such as shared ownership, quick feedback loops, and also um, the automation of workflows. And especially in the context of securities, um, DevOps principles have become also more and more um, popular. And one common practice is to actually use um, application security testing, which are tools that can automatically scan a given software artifact and then produce um, a list of security findings for this artifact. Um, and these tools can be categorized in two areas. So first we have the static analysis tools, which only look at the program source code. Um, and secondly, we have the dynamic analysis tools, um, which look at the running program. So when it's executed. And uh, you will see later then that we have two data sets. We generated one uh, for SAST findings and one for DAST findings. But what is um, our main research problem here with these findings? It is that if you use this automatic testing and you use multiple tools, then because the tools have an overlapping scanning scope, you can run into the problem that uh, the tools will generate duplicate findings. So multiple tools will talk about uh, the same problem twice or thrice. Um, to give you even a better understanding, I will quickly walk you through the life cycle, how it's usually done. So given that we have a continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline and software developers that work on such a software application, um, we would then use the automated um, scanners for scanning first the source code and generating um, the static application security testing reports. These are usually JSON files, and these JSON files also contain natural language text, which can be interpreted by security professionals. And so the security professionals will read this natural language text and try to identify problem areas and then communicate these results back to the developers in order to take the necessary measures to fix these problems. In the second stage, if we have run the um, static analysis, maybe uh, package the next, uh, uh, the next version of our software artifact, and now it is already running on our servers, we can then also use the dynamic application security testing, and again, generate reports that need to be analyzed by the security professionals. And here in the center, you see the security professional can be sometimes quite overwhelmed by the number of security findings. And we want to try out um, to use semantic similarity-based clustering to support the security professional with identifying um, problems in these security reports. And a prior decision that we had to take is first, okay, what um, software artifact do we want to scan? Um, and here we decided to scan Juice Shop. This is an open source web application, um, which is known to have security flaws and is also often used as a demonstrative example of a vulnerable uh, web application. And what regards the clustering, we decided on using problem-based clustering. There are other approaches. For example, we could cluster the security findings also in terms of their location or maybe in terms of their solution. But in this case, we really wanted to apply semantic similarity to bring together security findings that really talked about the same uh, problem. So the same vulnerability, for example. And once we had this, we decided to use three baseline models of semantic similarity um, to test if it's even feasible 
um, to use semantic similarity for this highly domain specific uh, natural language text. And we had three different categories. So one was a knowledge based semantic similarity um, using the WordNet graph. We had um, a classic model of latent semantic indexing. Um, and on the transformer based models, we used uh, aspirate, which is also uh, quite common for using as a baseline. So how did we construct now our data set to test out these three um, methods? So first, you see on the left side um, that we used seven static analysis tools and two dynamic analysis tools to scan juice shop. And this generated a bunch of security findings. Um, as you see here on the left-hand side, these are usually um, structured in a JSON format, have multiple attributes, and here on the bottom, for example, you see a description in natural language text that can be read by humans. Um, this is one from a static analysis tool. And on the bottom, you see one from Arachne, which is a dynamic analysis tool. Um, and you already see also that the length of description text can vary quite a lot. Um, more to this aspect, uh, I will tell a bit more about this later. For constructing the data set, we developed our own tool which is called uh, Cephila. And with Cephila, you can import these um, JSON security findings um, generated by the tools. And then we had two security professionals who went through the JSON files um, and grouped then the security findings into collections or clusters that talked about the same problems. For the evaluation, uh, the method looked like this. So first, when we had our ground truth data set, we tested the three semantic similarity methods um, for different similarity thresholds, but we also experimented with different um, feature strings. So how we constructed in the end, uh, the corpus of our security findings. Um, and then I will show you in the results slide, uh, the performance metrics. In this case, we use precision recall and the F scores. After the automatic evaluation, we also had a human expert evaluation where one security professional went over the incorrectly classified security findings. So maybe they were put together with um, a security finding which had a different problem focus. Um, then we tried the um, security expert to come up with potential reasons um, by only reading the security findings, why there could be maybe difficulties with putting them or assigning them to the um, correct cluster. And herefore, we also used the uh, Cephila as you see here on the right-hand side. Um, so coming to the results, first uh, about the data set that we constructed. Um, so first thing I think that is noticeable is that with our seven static analysis tools, uh, we generated 1,351 findings. And with our two dynamic analysis tools, uh, we had uh, 36 findings. And the number of findings also influences a bit the maximum findings per cluster, which is way higher for our data, with, data set with the static analysis tools um, and, and lower for the dynamic analysis. However, the average findings per cluster is I think a bit more comparable. Uh, we have around three for the dynamic um, analysis data set and for the static analysis data set, it's around seven. Um, one more thing I want to point out is that there was a tendency that you already saw in the two exemplary findings I showed you that for the dynamic analysis tools, the description texts were usually a bit longer. So you see the average characters per finding is also higher for the dynamic analysis tools. We tested out then different variants um, of extracting the descriptions from the security findings. For example, for the um, SAST data set, we used first only the finding descriptions. And then in another variant, we, uh, we checked if the concatenation of security findings of the same CVE ID, that is an ID that um, defines common vulnerabilities and exposures uh, for the same problems that are also part of the security finding attributes. Um, if two given security findings have the same CVE ID, we concatenated their finding descriptions in order to see if this um, longer text then gave us better results. We also had two variants for the dynamic analysis data set. So one only taking the description 
and another one for concatenating the name of the finding, uh, description, and the solution. Table two shows uh, the results. And um, so the main result is that SBIRT and LSI uh, outperform the um, knowledge based method with WordNet. Um, and also, for in view of the time, we will therefore focus on the results um, of SBIRT and LSI. What you also see in general that uh, the models performed better in terms of recall than in terms of precision, which means that it was a bit easier for them to retrieve um, the clusters that also the human annotators um, produced, but it was a bit more difficult for them to also have a good precision, which means that sometimes false positive clusters were generated. Um, when we're looking a bit more into details about the performance, here we see the analysis of the static um, SAS data set. Um, and there we tested out LSI and SBIRT for different similarity thresholds. In general, you see the higher the similarity threshold, uh, the better the F scores were, um, which was also mainly due to the fact that we could increase the precision and reduce the number of false positives. Um, and you also see that the concatenated descriptions, um, so when we had a bit longer texts um, in our security findings, also led to an increase in performance. And in the end, the best configuration was using latent semantic indexing plus our uh, concatenated descriptions. Even though with higher um, similarity thresholds, also I think SBIRT catches up with LSI. Let's look at the same results for the test findings. Uh, so here, again, we see LSI performs a bit better for low similarity thresholds, but then starting at around the similarity thresholds of 0 0.6 for the DAS data set, uh, we see that in the end, the best performing um, model, even though they were close together, um, was in this case SBIRT and SBIRT with the corpus variant where we concatenated not only uh, the description, but also the description together with the name and the solution. In this, we achieved an F score of 0 0.857. Moving from the automatic evaluation, let's also take a look now at the um, expert evaluation. So we had um, 72 incorrectly classified um, SUST findings. And, and two for the DAS data set. And then we provided the experts with the incorrectly classified findings um, and then asked them to come up with reasons uh, why the misclassification um, could have happened. So why were they maybe assigned to a wrong problem cluster? And for the SAS data set, it was pretty obvious that here it was highly dependent on the description text. We saw that some tools provide very short description texts, others provide very long description texts. So the high variance in text length sometimes led to wrong clustering. Um, in general, it was a problem for the SAS data set that the descriptions were rather short, so maybe only one sentence, um, which was then difficult, obviously, because we did not have too much text content for the semantic clustering. We even had one case. Um, where the tool um, overspecified. So it gave too much information, which in the end also could lead to um, a wrong clustering. Moving back to the um, dynamic analysis findings. So there we had two findings where the security expert provided the, as a reason um, that in order to make the security finding, um, the clustering right, the security expert needed some specific domain knowledge about this application. And all this background knowledge, it's even difficult for humans. Um, so only the algorithms that could only rely on the text, uh, for them, it's obviously very difficult to do the clustering. In this case, if you need some additional uh, domain knowledge about this application. So summing uh, up our findings, we tested three different semantic similarity techniques to see if they can uh, reproduce clusters of um, similar problems uh, when we are analyzing security findings that get generated from the automated um, security testing tools. Um, in detail, we found that uh, for the SAS data set, 
LSI performed the best when we concatenated the descriptions of the same CVE ID. And for the dynamic analysis data set, uh, we found that SBIRT uh, performed better than LSI, the knowledge-based method. <clears throat> and as I just mentioned, uh, the human expert draws special attention to how the feature string is constructed and how long and verbose the feature string had a very big impact on the performance of the clustering. So if we look towards the future work, uh, because we made uh, the Zephila tool public, we can also um, recommend future researchers to reproduce our results, maybe create a bigger data set, involve more security professionals, and test this approach out in different scenarios. Um, and lastly, obviously, we tested only three baseline methods um, for semantic similarity to show the feasibility of this approach. Um, and in the future, one could um, maybe try using other kind of structured data of Philip, the we have JSON only, files. We have only oh, 50 seconds, please. Okay, yeah, I will finish up with the last sentence. Um, okay. In the future, one could maybe try to use more sophisticated models, for example, bird models that were specifically trained um, on the text data of the security domain. And with this, I thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer any potential questions.